Hi, welcome to a kind of vlog-like video. I decided to try something new this time. Uh, just instead of my normal time lessons, and I made two really short projects. I thought it'd be fun to share in a more vlog-like structure. They're very, they're very simple, so it's gonna be really short, but uh, I thought it'd be nice to kind of explain them. So what I did was make two more abstract wall pieces. So I was inspired by my past project. Um, Mindful, which is the final project I made for one of my classes, Computational Fabrication. Um, and Computational Fabrication was a grad class, basically. Uh, because it was remote, we did a lot of uh, 3D printing work, and so that class taught me a lot about 3D printing. So I decided to kind of continue with that last piece, or the final piece that I made, which was um, an abstract wall wall piece uh, inspired by David C. Roy. I know I said piece a lot, but basically he makes a lot of abstract sculptures and uh, it's very cool. They're uh, kinetic, kinetic as well. They don't use any electricity, but instead of the kinetic part, I kind of um, made it more about the design. And um, I also really like having like geometric and very organic shapes together. So with these two really short like pieces I made, um, it's basically just showing like there's some rigid, very rigid shape and there's also a really organic shape together. They're very simple too, so if, if anyone saw like the 3D models, I think they would be able to put it together really easily. Um, and yeah, so just wanted to show you guys. So if you're wondering what happened to Mindful, when I was moving, um, I didn't have a box big enough to actually uh, hold it, so it actually broke while it was moving. But, you know, I was like, it's fine. Um, I'll, I'll figure out a way to repurpose it. So this is what happened to the repurposed version. Um, basically, it became a little more edgier, and it's now a official wall piece before it was kind of on the floor because I was trying to make it kinetic, but I didn't realize how heavy um, it would be. So that's kind of more about the inspiration about why I made these two uh, small abstract wall pieces. So here are the sculptures in all their glory. Um, here's the first one, it's called Lightning Bubbles, you might guess why. Um, and uh, yeah, and so these are actually all separate pieces together and I'll go and explain with the 3D model how that works. So the second one is Square Up. Um, <laughs> they're very, they look very similar, but this one is, uh, yeah, this is the second one I made. So this is the design for lightning bubbles and one thing I was limited by was the size actually because all of these pieces here they're actually their own separate bodies and parts from each other so uh, I didn't like the way pieces look when you glue them together so I made it made all of these pieces like basically print on the same printer and max the size um, so that's why you see the, the, the artistic piece itself, Lightning Bubbles, is kind of limited in size. I actually wanted it to be bigger, but because I didn't want to glue pieces together, I was limited by my printer bed size. Of course, if you're watching this and you want to make it yourself, you can scale it up and then, you know, do the whole gluing piece together. Or if you have a large 3D printer bed, you can always just go up and just scale it up. But yeah, so that's the reason why you see the size there. And so all of these are actually like their own parts. So if we take out the lightning part, you can see there's these little grooves on this ring here that uh, indicate where this lightning piece should go. And so this is the same for the other rings too. So if I like take out um, like this ring, you can see there's like grooves here. This is to fit in the other ring. So I take that one out too. Um, and so the way I put them together was using my favorite hot water method which is dipping pieces in hot water so that the plastic is soft and then it'd be easier to fit them together. Another way people do uh, fit push fit is just designing a small gap in, uh, of spacing between the two parts that you want to fit together and then uh, having those and then connecting those two pieces once you're done printing. But I feel like the hot water method is kind of, you know, the more lazy way. It's a little bit better in a sense too because like you can, it will fit together actually more snugly. So um, I use this technique for both this piece and the other piece. So for square up, it's pretty much the same idea here. So these all are their own individual parts. So if I take out the twist, you can also see there's like ridges here as well for that twist part. Um, if I take apart uh, the squares, so this one's a little different here. So this last square is actually free hanging. Um, this is because I placed it so it's in the center of the uh, this square here. So the best way for me to like split those two parts together was actually to combine this corner of the square to this square here. So and then make a little hole in here so that I could fit them in. And I also didn't make them, I made them slightly slanted too so that it'd be uh, easier to fit them in as well. So um, 
Yeah, and so, yeah, again, very similar idea for these other squares. This one was a little bit harder to remember how I put it together. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically how Square Up works. idea is to have these positioned on the wall. So this, for example, would go onto the wall like so. This, but um, I actually had a friend over and he was like, wait, what if, what if you like, you put them up like this? I was like, whoa, that actually looks pretty cool too. He's like, or you could also do like with this one too, it's a similar idea. Cause I also had that one also uh, up vertical. So if you, you can actually just put them up kind of just like as their own. Um, you can also modify them if you want. Um, you can change it if, depending on how you want your balance to work. So like this one can also work too. Um, this one's a little harder to balance because it's circular, but it can definitely work as well. So yeah, that was really interesting. So it's not, it's up to you. Like these are supposed to be abstract, like wall art pieces. So if you want to make it um, a vertical, if you want to make a horizontal, if you want to make it a different way, just do it. So yeah, that was pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this little short vlog. Um, I also will upload these models onto Thingiverse, like all my other 3D models, so that anyone can use them. I hope you enjoyed. The, doing these two pieces actually gave me another idea that's actually really a lot more complex. So I'll keep you updated, and hopefully I can finish that second one. Uh, but until then, see ya.